Hey everyone, so welcome back to yet another new episode on Retro Game Revival. Today we've got ourselves a PlayStation 1. Now, I was gifted this by a friend of mine. He said he bought it at a flea market ages ago and uh, ended up never trying it out and uh, got, a <clears throat> got a better one, uh, one that looked aesthetically better and um, decided that he's going to use that one and he gave this to me. So. First of all, thanks for that, and um, I think this is going to be an interesting episode. I, I'm i not really in it with this one for playing the games, because I've got a whole bunch of these, but I do think we've got some something interesting that we can do with the shell. So as you can see, the top and bottom here, it's quite discolored. There's a lot of dirt in between this, and if you catch it in the in the light, you can see a tiny bit of scratching going on here. So, yeah, my plan with this is I'm just going to take it apart um, and I want to do a retro brighting on the top shell. Um, if you look at it from the back, I don't think it shows properly on camera, but this is still gray and this is discolored. Uh, sides is also turned yellow, brown ish, as you can see from. The top and bottom pieces um, and the front as well so yeah just gonna tear this apart and uh, clean it up now interestingly the warranty sticker has been voided so I wonder if there's a mod chip in here um, but yeah there was a game left in there that he he said he had no use for so yeah it'll be fun to test around and uh, let's take this one uh, to bits shall we All right, so I just opened it up and I thought I'd uh, show you uh, the internals and what the state of this thing is currently. So there's a bit of corrosion, a bit of rust going on in the shield connector. There's some dirt on this connector, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Might be an indicator that there's some spill maybe going on in here. Um, other than that, it looks at least on the surface, it looks pretty decent. So I'm going to tear this down further and uh, we'll have a look at it. Thing is, though, I'm not too worried about the bottom side of it. Um, it's the top shelf, this piece that I want to focus on. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this part of it. So I got the, uh, the main board out and um, as I thought, there is a, uh, a mod chip in here. Now, what I've noticed is this cable been hanging loose in here. So I'll address this at a later point, but I'm going to remove this thing and we'll open this up and see what mod chip is in there, but I don't want to leave this in here. So I'm going to move on to the uh, cleaning up the front shell. And we'll get back to this later. So I've done a cleanup pass. I used some plastic cleaner and I yeah, just basically went around the whole housing. There were some black dirt spots or something on there. They're gone now. Obviously, you can still see scratches in the light. Um, worked on this shell a bit. There was a lot of dirt in these crevices, which is also gone. But as you can hopefully somewhat see, um, it's still very yellow. So this is yellowed and this is the original color. So let me show you my uh, retro bike bright station and uh, throw this in there and see in a couple hours what, uh, what difference that actually makes. So I wanted to show you this and um, I'm quite proud of it. Um, this is my retro bright box. So I think about a year and a half ago or something, um, Jan Beta actually did a retro bright thing on, I think it was a Commodore 64. And um, I saw him use a uh, UV lamp used for growing indoor plants. 
And I, I asked him on Twitter, it's like, hey, which one are you using for that? Because that seems pretty interesting. So um, <clears throat> he sent me a link. I bought this same one. I'm not doing it in my shower, though. What I've done is I took this plastic box and I cut a big hole. Let's see if I can show this. I cut a big hole <clears throat> in the top and um, just have the UV light shine through that. Now, the rest of the box is radiator foil and, I don't know, like reflective tape um, all around the interior of the box. So it still bleeds light, yes, but anything in here will have, um, like, it will shine light on every angle due to it being reflected by the foil. Um, so, yeah, I, I've used this a couple of times. I'll put a couple of pictures uh, up on screen, like somewhere here, I don't know, you'll see. And um, uh, that's some of the earlier results I had on a Super Nintendo and a Game Boy um, that I, like I said, I was really happy with. So I want to do the same to this machine. And what I'm going to do, um, let me put this thing to the side. Um, I'm going to fill this container because it's a container within it that I've raised with another box. So I'm going to put warm water in here and use peroxide. Um, this is 12%, so that's the same as the 14 volume cream. Um, and I'm going to put this with warm water in here. Um, the good thing about the shell is that the, the inner part hasn't been yellowed, so we don't need to retrobrite that really. And so I can put the lid on like that, put it in here, and I've got a couple of metallic bits that are stainless steel, so it doesn't react with the peroxide that I can put in here to weigh it down to make sure to make sure that it actually stays submerged. Um, I'm going to set that up and I'm not going to do it in my living room. I'm going to put this in um, in my garage. I'm going to leave that overnight so it'll have a good, uh, I think it'll be about 8 to 10 hours of soaking UV. Um, and then we'll get it out and we'll check the results. Uh, I'm going to set that up and in the meanwhile, I think the best we can do is actually look at that at the main board, do some clean up and get rid of that that mod chip that's floating around there. So this is back to the main board of the PlayStation 1. Um, I had a quick look. It says it's revision... Oh, let me get that on the camera. PU20. Um, <clears throat> and there's some really hacky mod chip going on. So I, as I showed earlier, the wire is already dangling loose. That shows. Yeah. So yeah, before before I do anything, uh, I really should get the rest of these out. So I'm just gonna go each wire one by one, take it off, and then we'll cut this open and uh, see what mod chip is in there. So got it out. Um, while I was desoldering that, it released some horrible smells. So I'm definitely going to go over uh, with it uh, with the IPA and the toothbrush. But you'll see me do that later. I'm really kind of curious to see what um, what we can find in here. So uh, not sure what the best way. Oh, well, it seems like the Blue on the tape is already separating, so here we go. Let's see what we get here. Doesn't say anything on there. Oh, wait. Let me try and get that in focus. Does that want to focus? Really does not, does it? All right. 
Uh, I'm going to scrape off that that top layer, and they'll take a, a macro lens, and we'll have a better look at it. Cool. So scraped off the debris or remainders of the tape that was on there, and as you can see, it's a Motorola 12C 508-P. So. I don't think this is a uh, modern stealth or uh, what's it called MM3 version, but yeah, who knows? I think this is one from way back in the day, um, but I really don't have a use for it myself. Uh, I'm just gonna toss this, but I thought it was interesting to to have a look at what 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 was going on with it. Um, let me actually try and get a macro of the board as well. All right, so this is the area that the two most left upper wires were soldered onto. It's the shiny bit here and above the white square. <clears throat> and that was actually quite smelly, to be honest. Um, and I think it was dust and, and dirt from ages and ages of pile-up. Um, I think this here next to the test pad was another point they soldered onto. I think there was one more over here, but I can't quite remember. Um, but in all honesty, it wasn't a bad job at all. Like, if I look at that, that's pretty decent. But yeah, regardless, I'm, I'm just going to go over this, give it a clean, and um, I think we'll wait for the retro writing to have done its thing, and uh, we'll reassemble and give it a good, give it a go, see if it actually still runs games. That'd be cool. Right, so it's actually spent a little longer in the um, retro bright station that I showed earlier. Um, because I was using the peroxide with a water solution, it well, dilution basically, um, I had to leave it in there for a little longer. So the top pieces, as you can see, it turned out really great. It's back to pretty much its original color. Um, but I think I left that in there for around a day or so. So it's a bit longer than the eight to 10 hours I anticipated, but that was because uh, it was diluted too much. I didn't have that much peroxide left. I think it might be in a quarter of a bottle or something. So I just had to extend the time um, in which I leave it soaked, basically. Um, <clears throat> when I pulled it out and I got it on, on the table, I was uh, preparing to record this video and I put it next to the bottom half. <laughs> I realized that the bottom half was more yellow than I realized. So I put that in there uh, for about half a day as well. So this is two days later since uh, last recording, but looking at this, I'm really, really pleased with the result. Um, I'll see if I can uh, do a like a side-by-side -side comparison or some effect that shows the, the changes it gone through, but I'm really pleased. Um, I'm going to reassemble the whole thing and we'll give it a test. There's one area here that eh, it shows up. This has some scratching. From a distance it's not that noticeable, but it sort of annoys me and I have an idea about what I could possibly do to it. Now, I got to be honest, it could make things worse, but I'm willing to give it a try and uh, for sake of experimentation, um, after we reassembled it, um, we'll give it a try and I'll explain things a bit more in detail then.
Right, so as I was reassembling it, I was testing around a bit, and I noticed that the um, power and the eject button, they were catching a bit on the plastic itself. So I took this off, I took off the slide part of it um, that catches the lid, goes underneath here, and if you press this, it makes this piece slide out so that the lid actually opens up. And um, uh, yeah, like I said, I noticed some catching. So what I want to do here, I want to take a bit of mollycott and uh, get this greased up so that we uh, that it actually functions a bit better. So I want to do that around the power button. I'm actually going to do it on the reset as well. And same for the eject button. And I'm going to apply a little bit on this here as this piece of plastic, even though it is a smooth, it, piece of plastic it's different material it feels different to the rest of the casing um, it sort of slides along this area here so I just want it to be a hundred percent functional so I'm gonna take my molly cup take a tiny bit of it put it on onto a cotton bud this might already be way too much um, but yeah, so just gonna go around a little bit just so that the uh, plastics itself, they just slide a bit better. So, and here, gonna add some around here as well. And um, actually to get the buttons out, it's Pretty easy. You just pinch these two tabs, and uh, slides out. You might want to. Have to... Oop, there you go. That's it. So take a bit of molly cut again. Like that, and uh, just going to apply it just a little bit. Very thin film is all you need. Just around. Yeah. Yeah. That might be too much already again. Um, and uh, yeah, you can just uh, reinsert it. Uh, I'm eyeballing it here. There we go. There you go. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to do that to these two, fully reassemble it, and then we'll try it out and see uh, see if she actually boots any games. All right, so I wanted to address the tiny bit of scratching I have going on here. So I'm, I'm trying to catch it for you, but under certain light, it's worse. Uh, like there, you can see it. It's worse than from other angles, but it does leave a noticeable, here as well, tiny little white stain. So my idea is to try and use one of these, which is a magic eraser sponge. And I know these are a little bit abrasive, so it's going to sort of try and smooth or buff out the, uh, the scratches. And um, I'm going to use a tiny bit of IPA um, with this sponge and see if we can make that look a bit better. So I'm going to try around with it a bit and uh, it could make it worse, but we'll see. Well, I got to say that worked really well. Um, <clears throat> under certain lighting angles, you can still see a tiny bit of scratching, like there. It was really, really not that noticeable. And that scratch has been completely gone up oh, there. You can, you can see that on the lid, there's a tiny bit of scratching. But if you look at it from a distance, like... You could not tell. It looks absolutely perfect. So if you're in a pinch and you know, you've got some severe scratches showing up, you can use one of these to, to mask it. It will not fix it, but um, at least it'll be, to me, not as much of a sore thumb. Um, like I said, and as you can see, it looks a lot better now. So... 
let's go and actually test this thing now because I'm happy with the visual results. Just be nice if it would actually play any games. So let's head over to my television and uh, give it a go. Let's turn it on and see what happens. So I'm going to close the lid now. It sees the signal. Oh, yes. Let me change the setting. Yeah, there we go. Proper size. Oh, it actually does recognize a disk in there. So, I hope it boots. That'd be sweet. That's amazing. It seems to work. Let's skip past that, see if we can actually get into some sort of gameplay and see what it does. It seems to be fine. Actually, it did reset my widescreen setting, so let's fix that. Here we go. So yeah, it seems to have done its ah, boo. It seems to have been working fine all along. It just looked a bit dirty, and now that we fixed that, I think we can conclude the video and call it a success. I hope you really enjoyed it. I had a great time doing this and it was a fun project. I hope to be doing more of these types of restorations. And uh, if you're interested or if I missed anything, uh, write it in the comments down below. If you have any questions, I read all of the comments and I try to answer as quickly as possible as well. So I hope you had a good time watching this and uh, hope to see you on the next one.